Hello my friends, welcome to Painting with Harold. And tonight I'm using a 16 by 20 inch canvas that's turned on landscape. Already covered in a very thin even coat of liquid white. And the colors we'll be using tonight are Titanium White, Thalo Blue, Lizard Crimson, Dark Sienna, Van Dyke Brown, Sap Green, Ked Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, and the Evil Bright Red. And tonight I thought we'd just do a fun little scene, maybe uh, something without mountains in it. Uh, I've been doing quite a few mountains here lately and I'm just, I don't want to say I'm sick of them, but I just, I want to get away from them for a couple nights and do something else. <laughs> just something a little different. Alright, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my brush, 2 inch, and I'm going to go straight down into the halo blue, just like we always do when we load it. Just straight down into it, just tapping the bristles. Not picking up a ton of paint, but just a little, and just tapping it into the bristles to get that, that even load of paint across the bristles. Then we'll come up. We'll start in this corner, and then we'll go over to this corner, and then we'll just come across the top with our thalo blue, and then we'll start blending, coming down, just making those little egg strokes, the little strokes we always use when we're doing this, just putting us in a nice little happy sky, just to something kind of pretty and then the more we go down toward the horizon the lighter it's going to get because it's mixing with our liquid white that's on the canvas so we're just going to let that happen and then we'll very lightly just blend back up and just just like so we have us a little sky in our picture. Then I'm going to come back up and I'm going to go back into just a little bit more of the Thalo Blue. Doing it the same way. Just tap it right on the brush. All right. I'm not planning on, as of right now, having water in this painting. If I do, along the way, change my mind it won't be much so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start down here just like we always do except this time I'm gonna go all the way across with my strokes and I'm just gonna make straight even strokes pull out just a tad bit more color and tap it in the brush and I'm gonna start down here again because I don't want to start up here and get a darker color I'm going to start down here and start working my way up because what I want it to do is I want the color to get lighter toward the horizon and I want a light spot in the middle where they meet just like so now that way if we decide to uh, put water in this paint we already got a a color we can use for it and at, like I said as of right now I don't think I'm gonna have water in this one uh, so we'll just we'll wait and see I mean it's it's hard to ever say exactly what's gonna happen in a painting all right now I'm gonna come over here in my little pile of brushes I got going on and I want to pick up a number six fan brush Just like so. I'm going to come up here to my titanium white and I'm just going to pull it through, load up both sides just like we always do. And all I'm doing is just dragging that brush through the paint. That's all I'm doing. Alright. I guess we need to figure out basically what kind of clouds we want in this guy today.
Oh, let's see. Let's just come up here and, and just just create some some puffy little clouds. Just let a little let a little fan brush just just go crazy up here. Alright, see so I got me some blue on my brush. If you can see that. So I'm gonna take my paper towel and just drag it gently across and just knock some of the blue out so I don't contaminate my white. And if I do get a little white in it, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cry about it. Alright, come back up here and just hit the high spots on some of these. Just to dump out some more of the white. And then I'm gonna rub my brush gently across my paper towel again. Knock out some more of the blue. And then I'm gonna lay this fan brush down a minute. I'm gonna take me a clean dry two inch brush. And I'm gonna come right up here. And I'm gonna start making little circles, blending out the bottom of these little clouds. Just being sure not to get up in the top of them and and uh, disturb that top. We always want our top of the clouds to be kind of brighter unless we have a direct light source under them. And in the next case, we want the bottoms to be. All right, fluff them up and then very lightly just come across and just real gently. Blend them in a little. <coughs> All right. Then I'm gonna come back up here. Grab my fan brush again. Come back up here, my white. Get me a little more of it. Then we'll come right under these clouds and and just create me a another little row of clouds across here. And then maybe bring this one up and. Just kind of let him roll off the canvas over here somewhere. All right. Then we'll come back over here on this one and just just kind of round him on out like so. And then come back and give it just a little body, not much, just a little. And touch the top. We need to touch this top up here a little bit because it's it's not real white. I'm going to come back and fix it. Just like so. And I don't think we really need many more clouds in it today. I mean this this little paint is going to be something kind of kind of simple but kind of fun too so we won't get too complex with it. I think it's just going to be something that, that's real real pretty and I think it's a painting that anybody can do at least that's what I think in my mind and we'll like I said you never know what a painting's going to do until you start working on it so we'll see where it ends up but as of right now what I'm thinking it's going to be is just a little simple country scene with some distant trees uh, maybe with a little taller trees in front of that with like a little field of grass and maybe a creek, I'm not sure, or maybe a path, and that's kind of the way I'm leaning. And uh, maybe put an old cabin or an old country church or something in it, just, you know, some little structure to just make it look like it's a little, little country scene just sitting back in the land that time forgot, you know. And then somebody just stumbled across it one day and saw everything that used to be back in there and decided they wanted to paint it. <laughs> or when we get to going, you know, it may it may look so good that we wanna we want it to be a church people are still going to. I don't know. We'll just wait and see what happens when we get to it. But as of right now, that's that's what my mind's got going on. We'll wait and see. Y'all right. got you a cold beverage tonight? If so, tell me in the comments what you're drinking. Me? You know what I got. I got my cold Pepsi.
and it's sweating. Pepsi should come here and sponsor this channel because we go through some Pepsis in this house. Alright. I have got me a little brush here. It's a number six. All it is is a little flat brush with some stiff bristles on it. And the name of it, which somebody as country as me probably should be trying to pronounce no China name, but uh, I'm going to call it a Yang Zhu or a Yang Zhao. And it says China. So it just come in a little cheap set that I picked up at the Hobby Lobby the other day. But I thought it'd be real good for for doing what we're fixing to do up here. At least I think it will. We're fixing to see. Alright, let me get this over here out of the way. Alright, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take that little brush, and I'm going to come right here into this dark sienna. I'm going to grab just a tad bit of the green, about that much. Do you see that on the brush? Then I'll come over here to the dark sienna and probably take about that same amount and just tap it in the bristles very lightly. Oh, I need to update you on the weather last night too, don't I? I kind of hate things went down like they did because I, I kind of started rushing through that paint there at the end. and uh, But it got pretty rough here. We didn't get no, no tornadoes, but there for a little while, it, it got pretty rough. So... All right, I'm going to come up here, and I'm just going to start in the sky. I hope y'all can see this. And I'm just going to take this little brush, and I'm just going to tap. Just the indication of a, of a little tree way back here that's just sitting back here by itself, just doing his own little tree thing. Just, just like so. Can you see that? All right. Then I'm going to come back in here and I'll just barely touch that same paint again. And believe me, I'm not using much paint at all. Alright, I'm going to drop down kind of beside this one and maybe come over from it a little bit and lay the brush sideways. See how I got it? I'm going to go in sideways. And I just want to tap on some little indication of some little short bushes or something in here just... Now this color's actually being a little more uh, on the dark sienna side, and that's fine. I mean that's that's not going to hurt a thing. It don't you don't have to put a lot of green in here for it to be effective. All right, now where I stop at right here, and I didn't come over far. I'm just going to come up, and I just want to come over here and just kind of kick me up another little. Another little tree that sitting back here in the distance, just doing his own little tree thing. Just you know, just sitting back here, and I don't want them, you know, I don't want them side by side, and I don't need them the same height. So we'll make this one just a little taller. He ain't got to be a lot taller, but we do want him some taller. Not like so. And then we'll come over a little bit from him. But now we do want to keep us some little bush shapes going across the bottom over here. And they don't have to be everywhere. Just, you know, occasionally put in a little a little bush. Leave you a little space. And come in and put you another little bush. Just like so. I mean, they, you know, bushes don't, I guess bushes don't just grow uh, side by side. You know, there's spaces in between them. And some of them will be taller and some of them will be shorter. And anytime you're painting, you know, that kind of scene, you want to you wanna try to think about that stuff. Because if it, you know, if it's going to have any type of realism to it at all, It'll look better if you, you know, if you kind of space things out. You'll have some dead limbs back here, and 
twigs and you know just all kind of broke up stuff none of it's actually the same or you know you, you can have all you know a whole bunch of vines and, and just all kinds of craziness you know just all kind of junk in it so you just kind of you know in, the, in your mind just kind of play that you know just kind of play that out and just kind of let whatever you think's back here just let it be back here I mean that's it's entirely your your choice it's your world it's your painting and in my mind I just I don't see a I just I don't see a whole lot of uh, trees back here I mean not not right now you know all of these like I said I want them in the distance anyway so we're just gonna we're just gonna let them do what they do all right and then about right in here I wanna I wanna kind of I wanna kind of just stop right here you know just just don't go no further right there and then in my mind I think that path is gonna I think that path is gonna come out let's see I don't know if I want it to come out and then turn back I kind of don't I think it'd be better if it came out over here and came around let's see alright let's see if the path come over here because we could put some stuff back there to kind of hide it but let's say the path come down you know drop him on down pretty good and say it come down and just kind of came off the canvas right in here somewhere. And that way we could put us a couple of tall trees in here. And then let's see. Alright, we could put us a, another little tall tree right here just just not quite as tall as his neighbor here. I'm bring that right over to where the path would be. I'm talking to myself. Y'all please forgive me. I want to think about how this needs to be laid out before we before I jump in here and, and botch it up. <coughs> I don't want the little path to disappear back in here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little skip right in here and put in a another little bush and then come out of it with a, another little another little tree about, about that tall and then maybe a little bush to finish it out over here on the end of the canvas and we'll keep the trail back in there like that just let it go off into into nothing back there And then we'll come in here and just uh, just kind of start. Now this is all rough. I'm not by no means is this where everything you know. I don't mean it's possibly going to stay this way. I'm just this is a real rough draft. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to come back in here and widen it and a couple other things before we get it where everything's going to be. Alright. And we just want it to kind of kind of bend over here. And kick off the canvas like so. And then over here Bring it in. Let this tie together right in here. Not like so. And then we'll bring it down and around. And 
a little cheap brush losing losing bristles which I can see that I'm rubbing it and I'm sure this little 25 cent deal wouldn't what meant for all this all right now we can work on how wide we need the path and all that good stuff as we as we go to building around it and all that good stuff and then that'll give us an opportunity to come in here and put some put some uh, other trees and some grass and and just build us a nice little nice little deal that may look all right when we get done I don't know we'll see may look like crap you never know <laughs> oh all right I know we're gonna need a few bigger trees over here just to add to the overall effectiveness so if we're gonna have some taller trees over here right, let's see we want a couple tall trees over here we can bring them down and we'll bush them out so we'll probably put another one maybe right in here and we'll drop this one down a little bit and make them look like they're going back up and then we may come in here with another one kind of stop him up here somewhere and in the process we'll put some extra little trunks in here to make this look like a little wooded area over here all right, so all right if we're going to do that let's come in here get a little more of our color that we've been using that brown and green on this little brush we'll come right in here and we'll we'll just bring a couple more little bush type things over and just tap them in at random and we'll come all the way over to this tree and then I think in between these trees I'm just going to put a little a little color I don't think this is going to show but just in case it does you'll know why I did this in a little bit but I really don't think it's going to show so alright then I'm going to come across the bottom here and Kind of give this a. I'm gonna use just basically brown back here because I want this to be kind of darker at the bottom. So we'll have us a little shadow to work with back here when we start filling all this in. Because we're gonna have to. I may pick up just a hair of the, dark, of the Van Dyke brown. I mean, we are going to come in here and add just a few highlight colors in here, but they're going to be so they're going to be so muted that you know you may see them and you may not. Because, like I said, I want this little I want this little area back here to to actually serve as a uh, distant kind of trees and and uh, let me bring it right over to our path. I just want these to kind of serve as a a little distance in our in our landscape, just to uh, right, that's a little too dark right there. I'm gonna have to work on that. I can work on that when we come back up there with our uh, with our uh, trail, our path. All right, so let's. Uh, Let's add just a little bit more in indications in here as of where we're going to kind of put things. Right. And I'll come in here and make these spots darker again. Because as of right now, they look rough. They look like they're going off the hill and everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and kind of pat up on them a little bit just in case they start making a indication back there. 
Alright. Over here, I guess when we get that far, we can come up and do a couple a couple tall trees. Maybe do one in here and maybe another one in here. And that'll look pretty good. We may set the uh, we may set the little building over here or over here. I don't know yet. We'll see where we put the little building. <coughs> All right. In the meantime, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is clean this little brush. Dry it out. And we'll come right up here. And we'll pick up just a tad bit of the yellow on it. And all I'm doing is just tapping it straight into the yellow. That's all I'm doing. And this is straight cad yellow. No other color. Alright. And then I'm going to come up here and just barely... i to get this hair out first. I just want to come up here and barely touch... This little tree back here with this yellow and just give it a little color and try in the process not to uh, kill all the dark color that we put in it but on the same token I don't really want a whole lot of I don't want a whole lot of bright in it if that makes sense I mean I want to I want to see some color but I don't want to I don't want to see enough that it's going to take over everything. All right, I'm coming right next door now and pick up just a little, a very little of the uh, yellow ochre. <coughs> and I'll come over here on this little taller one. And I'll just start very lightly tapping it. Same way, I don't want to. I don't want a ton of color on it, but I want it just enough that you can see it and just enough that you would recognize it as being a tree if you were standing back, you know, 10 foot or so from this canvas and saw this, you'd be like, oh man, that's a tree. That's just the trees. And you can always go back to the yellow and get the yellow ochre and yellow mixed together. They make a pretty decent little color. We'll come right over here and we'll, we'll give this little this little tree an indication of a color. Just like so. We can come over here and grab just a little of the bright red. And come up here and just barely touch this little bush right here. And let him kind of stand out some. Come over here and get back in our yellow again just a little bit and let these two colors make an orange. And bring that color over here. Let's, let's hit this tree right here with this orange. We'll just give him a little indication of some color back here. And I can't tell you how important it is that you leave some of that color behind that when you're doing them. Because with them being way off in the distance like that, they're gonna have a they're gonna have a different look to them than if they were in the foreground. So just just kind of let that color kind of just fade out. You know, don't let it be too distinct. See how distant that looks. All right, let me come back in here and get just a little more yellow and put in that orange. And that'll just brighten it up some. It'll keep it close to the same color, but it'll give it a different value. And with that, we can come right here beside this one and just kind of give him a little lighted look. See how, how different he looks sitting there all lit up. Let me come in here and get a little of the Indian yellow. Bring it over into the cad yellow. And these two colors mixed together, they they make a pretty color. And just bring it up here and 
Just lightly touch him too. Just, just like so. That's all you got to do. And you can come back into your cad yellow again. I mean, I'm sorry, your yellow ochre again. And then this one that's out here by itself, just kind of, just kind of let him pick his own little colors up. Give him just a little, little shape, about like so. Bring that color down just a hair. Alright, I'm going to grab just a bit of thinner, just a drop, and we'll come right up here. Now that i got these colors on my brush, then I'm going to get just a little, very little of the sap green, and come back down here in my yellow, and I want to tone that sap green down just a little bit, and I'm going to come right here along the on the bottom and just kind of give it some green color down through here because I don't want everything to look dead and dying. Some of it I want I want to maintain a green one. Then you come over to the cad yellow by itself with just a little more green on here and make it lighter. Come up here and give yourself an indication of a lighter green back here. In a couple places, about like so. Just let this color kind of play along. You can come back in here and touch some of it just to lighten it up some, so it don't get too dark on you. But you always need that change of color, you know. If you can indicate a color change in a paint, you've done yourself something. And by now, anybody that's been painting with us for the past what eight months seven eight months now you should uh, you should have the color change thing down I mean that shouldn't even be an issue all right we'll come back up here and pick up a little of this green and just to bring it over here and get just a tad bit of ochre now these colors are they are just very minimal I mean they're not They're not at all uh, real dominant or prominent either. I mean, they just just some colors I'm picking up very little of on this little bitty brush. And every time I go back down there and load it, all I'm doing is just tapping right down in it. Matter of fact, let me show you exactly what I'm doing. That way you'll know. Right, let me get this where it's kind of level. All right, I'm just. I kinda, I'm kind of using that corner, and all I'm doing, let's say I want to come over here, we'll do a little more red. I'm just coming in here, where that red is, see it? And I'm just, can you even see that? No, not with my hand in the way you can't. But I'm just, I'm just tapping real lightly into the red. That's it. That is all I'm doing. I'm not doing anything special. And then when I come up here and touch, I'm just, I'm just barely touching. I'm just letting that little bit of paint pull right off. And that's all I'm doing. And now we've made us a little indication across there of a, of a uh, little tree line. Some people call it a little hedgerow. You, know, you call it whatever, whatever you want to call it in your part of the country. But it's, it's just a little, you know, it's just a little tree line just to have a indication up here. All right, I'm going to put that brush to the side for now. And I've got that brush that we had all that blue in. And I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and wash it right quick. And uh, we'll come up here next. and We're going to do another little step that might get interesting. <coughs> All right. I'm going to take and dry it off on my, on my napkin. 
and we'll get just a drop thinner in it, not much at all. And then I'm gonna come right up here, and this is all I'm gonna do right here. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna drag through my Van Dyke Brown, and then I'm gonna come over here and drag through my Sap Green, and then back in my Brown, just like that. And then I'm just gonna push that color, put my brush in and push it up, just like that. And you'll see what it what it does to the to the paint when we come up here. All right, where we put that little spot, and we made us a dark spot under here. I'm gonna come right over here under it, and I'm just gonna start touching, and I'm gonna start coming towards my path, just like so. And I'm just gonna start working this color in. And I'll start, I'll keep coming toward the path, but I'm going to stop short of it. But I'm going to keep coming across here. But when I do, every time I get to where that path is, I'm going to stop short of it. I'm not going to go into it just yet. Then I'm going to come over here and just tap, just tap a little more color on it. Then we'll come over here and do the same thing. And those little indications of, of where I thought we would make trees, I'm just covering them up. Just covering them right up. Now you can just barely see indications of that green paint that's in here. Alright, and I'm keeping this paint kind of, or these strokes, kind of level across here. I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to make any hills or anything in my lay of the land right now. So I'm just, I'm trying to keep it as level as I can for now. But I just want to, and the only reason I'm tapping all this on, you don't have to, but the only reason I'm doing it is because I want the texture. Now you can come back and put the texture in it, but for me it's always good to just practice this, this process. Because it's such a time consuming process, it makes it kind of rough for, for doing videos and trying to show people. Where if I was here by myself and I was just painting this painting, I just brushed it on and, and uh, kept on going. But for people that's trying to learn how to paint, and you want to, you know, until you get more comfortable with this procedure, because a lot of people have problems with uh, with making that grass look fluffy. And and in this video, I'm gonna try to slow down a little bit when we get to that part and kind of explain a couple of things that might be giving you problems and see if we can maybe help you get that process a little better for you. All right, All right just like that. Now see in here you're going to want this area darker anyway when you start coming more forward. But for now, with all these trees going in here, I want this area a little darker well, it don't really matter. I mean, I'll probably make this. Let's go ahead and do it now. Cause we're gonna have we're gonna have trees growing in here at different places. On, you know where the trunks are gonna be. So where them trees are gonna be, you know they're gonna be cast in shadow. So we're gonna need some dark up here somewhere. So I guess we could go ahead and put it in. But we are gonna have to work on our path. In a little bit, and we don't really want to see a whole lot of blue because if, at this point, if we was going to put water in, it'd be just like a little puddle or a little pond somewhere, it wouldn't be nothing real, uh, you know, like a river or nothing, it'd just be something kind of simple. All right, we'll crap just a little more of the green and bring it over into the brown and we'll come to this side now and I'm gonna do the same thing over here I'm just gonna come out toward the path but I'm gonna stop just short of it and the reason I'm stopping short of it is because I'm gonna widen this path out in a little bit and I don't really know exactly how how uh, 
how wide I'm going to make each yet. And I don't want to fight with all this dark color while I'm trying to decide that. So I decided not to. <laughs> okay. And the same thing I did on that side over, over here, I'm doing over here. I'm just trying to keep it level across here. And I know it's not dead level, but it's not coming down the hill, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I've got it all to where I can uh, I can work with it with the highlights. It's it's not out of hand. If I had it if I had it bent one way or the other, coming up hill or downhill, then it'd be it'd be a little harder to control, but you could do it. It just makes it a little harder. And if you keep it kind of straight, like right now, when you start highlighting it, it don't make it near as hard. Alright, now this brush has got a lot of dark color in it. So what I'll do is, I'll go ahead and, uh, I'm going to take a quick break and wash these brushes. And I will be right back. All right, got all the brushes clean, and I think our next step is going to be work on this path a little bit. And I have got a little number three fan brush, and this one's kind of raggedy. I've used it to beat on for quite some time. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right up here in the dark sienna, and I'm going to take just a corner, just like that, and I'm just going to load up that one corner with paint. That's all. Then I'll come up here and I want to, hope y'all can see this. Let me grab it back here on the back. I'm going to come up here and just touch and then just start just dragging it across. And I want to drag this across straight. And I don't want to get real wide with it right here. I want it to stay kind of narrow coming out of here and I want to keep it straight and then the further I go down the wider I want it to go and I'm going to start rocking that brush just ever so lightly just it's a real real slight little rocking motion and I'm just going to start pulling it across and like I said you want to you want to keep it as straight as you can across here. And just narrow it down the further it goes back. And if you get too wide with it in here, you can always come back and, and fix it with the grass. All right, then I'll load up just a little bit more to paint. And I'm going to come in here and just, just start pulling it across. And this is just straight dark sienna, is all it is. That's all it is. And then you can add just a little more paint to your brush. And I'm, you know, not more paint, but wider, like lay the brush down flat. Because now you, you know, you're starting to get a little wider stroke with your, with your path down here. Because the further you come towards you, the wider you want your path to get. But now I'm not loading the brush up to where it's just coated in paint. I just want a little paint on here. And I'm just trying to bring it out even with the, or close to the grass. And I may end up going into it in places. And if I do, well, that's just one of them, one of them things that's going to happen. And then I want to bring this side out wider, and then this side in a little, a little narrower to make it look like it's turning. 
be coming straight down at us right in here just like so and just let it get wider as it comes off the canvas down here just wider down here at the bottom and then just just like so keep working until you get that until you get that curve in it to make it look like it's turning that corner and going back just like so Because here in a little bit we're going to have to come in here and highlight all this. So, alright. I think that looks acceptable. Down here I'm going to add a little bit of Van Dyke Brown where it's darker. That way it'll, we can see what we're doing down here. like that. Get this side darker. Or this Indian darker. I like that. Let it, just let it get wide as it comes off. That's all we want to do. And then narrow out. Just like that. Okay. Alright, now I'll drop that brush into thinner. And we'll pick up a one inch brush. Just a clean dry one inch. And I'll bring it over here and just a little of the thinner. And I'll come over here in the CAD yellow and I'm gonna pull through it. Let me show you what I'm doing here. Because this is that this is how we're gonna start making that soft looking grass. I'm pulling through the CAD yellow with the one-inch brush, just pulling my brush through it, both sides. And then I'm going to take, before I leave the canvas, I'm going to take and push it up. Push up that little ridge of paint right there. If you can see it on my palette. That little ridge of paint is out here on my brush too. Okay. So then I'm going to come right up here. And I'm going to just start tapping across here real easy. This is a very easy touch. If you, if you touch this too hard, this effect will not work for you. All it's going to do is just smear. And then every time you come back and load the brush, just load it the same way. And I'm coming up just high enough that it's staying right there under that, that dark spot we made up here. And if this paint is not coming off your brush the way you want it to, get you just a drop more thinner and put on your bristles and then just come back up here and bring it all the way across to your path. <coughs> we're going to do that before we highlight the path. That way if we get some of this yellow in the path we can we can kind of work with it later. Alright now I have got a question for you guys while I'm doing this. And I really need help in the comments on this one. So y'all let me know. Anytime I'm working on an area like this that's real boring, where all I'm doing is sitting here just tapping on highlight colors on grass, 
Would y'all rather for me to leave the footage going? Or would y'all rather for me to kind of tune away from this and, and go to something, you know, put like a little filler video in, you know, something maybe like Epic Fails or, you know, my dog's outside playing or something. You know, I'll, I mean, I'll come up with something that that we can kind of put in here to break this boredom up because this is this has got to be this has got to be pretty boring to sit here and watch somebody do this for you know five or ten minutes just tapping on highlight color so rather rather than y'all get bored and, and leave or you know sit there unhappy I could uh I could just go when I go to editing I can just Add something to uh, kind of fill a void until I get get done doing this. And I really hope y'all participate in this and comment on it. Let me know, you know, what y'all would like to see me do because I don't know if y'all don't tell me. But I just I'm you know I'm trying to think of something that that might make it a little better. Been sitting here watching somebody type type highlight colors on grass. You know, something that may take, like I said, 10, 15 minutes. You could be sitting here watching people fall or getting scared or something, you know. <laughs> something kind of fun here, or, you know. I'm sure we can come up with something to put on there. Just something different. You know, Bob used to have them filler moments. He would uh, introduce you to animals that he was raising. And that's all that was, was just filler moments so his audience didn't get bored. And it's really a good idea. I mean, it really is. And, you know, I thought about, I don't raise no animals other than them birds. Y'all probably about sick of them and my dogs. So I thought, you know, why not just uh why not just add something, you know, like something funny. Like epic fails or some uh I don't want to put nothing that's gonna be vulgar on there. Cause my granddaughter watches this channel. And uh I definitely don't want her seeing something that is inappropriate. So I wouldn't do that. But if y'all will, just come in and, and say, you know, no, we'd rather watch you sit there and put highlight colors on or, yeah, you know, that sounds like a good idea. Do some, do something kind of funny or, you know, something to, to kill the, kill the time. And I'll do it, you know, it's not a big deal. Because I know if I was sitting here watching somebody do this, I would be like, ugh. Because it's just doing the same thing over and over. It's tapping on color till you run out, and then going back getting more color, and coming up and tapping till you run out. <laughs> because that's all I'm doing. I'm just tapping on this color, coming over to the path, and just, when I get, when I get down here, just, if the paint stops coming off, I just go get more thinner, and if it don't, I just tap until I run out of paint, and then I go get some more paint. And I, I just feel like it's, you know, it's probably boring. Because one thing I'll say for YouTube, on the analytics page they got, they show a little, a little section where you get, see how long people watch your videos. And my view time drops off after sometimes, you know, 20, 25 minutes. So, you know, if it's getting boring, then, you know, tell me it's getting boring after 25 minutes. 
and I'll try to work on what, what part's getting boring. Because this channel is for all of us. For y'all, for me, for people that's just learning to paint. For some people that already know how to paint that just want to come check it out see if I'm doing anything different. You know, so just uh, communicate. That's all we got to do. A little more to green, a little more to cad, I mean yellow ochre and the Indian yellow. Then I'll come up here and start on this end or on this side. And I'll bring it over. And I'm doing this side just like the other side. Just bring that color over to the path. That's all I'm doing. Loading the brush up the same way. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not doing anything different. <coughs> so this is probably boring. Okay. Just like so. But see how fluffy it just makes that grass look when you just come up here and just barely tap it on? It just gives it that that little soft look, just textured and, and real pretty. And if you keep continuing to tap that, it'll go away. And I like to add a little yellow ochre and Indian yellow in it from time to time to kind of spice it up and give it a, a totally different look. Make it look like it's changing color in places. You just have to keep a little thinner on there. When I say a little, I mean a little. About a drop. It don't take much. And every now and then you can leave some dark spaces in your in your grass to kind of give it those ridges and, and and bumps. If you see a spot that's dull you want to light up, just pick you up a little paint and come up here and touch over the top of it. Just like that. That's all you got to do. See how that just lit that whole little area up? <coughs> it just flattened it right out. But this color, when you go to mix it on the brush like that, let me show y'all how this looks. See this color right here? Now that's clean cad yellow up here on top. Look how that's got the green and the yellow ochre and the Indian yellow and all that is all mixed right there together. And it just, it just mixes right on the brush. And you may come up here and tap one time and get See, like that color's different than the last little pass we made. And that's that's what I like about this this process. You don't know what the next color you you gonna have is. It's it's just difference in color. And then if you got some spots that's dull. Just like we did over here, just come back in there and give them just a little light touch of color. That's all you got to do, and it'll it'll liven them right back up, and just just continue. That's all you got to do, and it's just such a light little tap. I <laughs> mean, it's it's so light. Since we're getting closer down here, 
come across here now and kind of liven this spot up a little bit. Just like so. Look at that, how that works. That is so pretty when it works like that. Wow. Lord, I'm the one sitting here doing it and I done got bored quiet. <laughs> Have y'all voted on the contest yet? Only three people voted on it so far, so on on YouTube I got a bunch of votes on Facebook. They uh there was some good entries this month, I'll say that. So if you get a chance and you hadn't voted on it, go check it out and see what your favorite one is and just put the number in the in the comments. It's just that easy. Come across here. Like so. We're to come back up here now and add us a little, a little color across here. Get some of this texture back in here. Like so. All right. I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video right here and come back tomorrow and finish it up because if I sit here tonight and try to add the building and these trees over here, it's going to be another hour and I, I just, I know that's going to bore y'all and I don't want to do that, but we got us a sky and we got us a beautiful little field of grass, we got the path. And we got some distant trees done. So for now, oh, and some pretty clouds. So for now, I'm just going to leave it be and finish it up tomorrow and make it a two-part video. And that way, it won't keep y'all watching for hours on end. Think about what I was saying when, you know, when I have big areas to do like this. You know, if, if I come in here and fill it in with something, it may keep y'all from getting bored and and I really, I worry about stuff like that because I don't know how entertaining I am sitting here talking. And I, I just don't want to bore y'all. So please let me know in the comments. And the channel is growing and I cannot tell y'all how much I appreciate it. I think today it was up to, oh goodness, 635 I think it was. Uh... That leaves us, what, 365 away from being to the thousand where we need to be. So you guys, thank y'all so much. I mean, from the bottom of my heart, thank y'all. I appreciate y'all watching. I appreciate y'all commenting. And just, you know, continue to like and share and subscribe. And I will come back tomorrow and we'll finish this pretty little painting up. And remember, I love you. God loves you more. And y'all have a blessed night. See you tomorrow right here. Painting with her.